Welcome back, my friends, to Marvel Snap. It's a new day, so we are building a new deck. My absolute favorite card in the game is Heimdall, and Heimdall has a dream. He can see a deck that perfectly synergizes with all the cards wanting to be moved around the board. There's timestamps if you want to jump into gameplay, and there's going to be a deck list edited in above me, but we're going to do some deck building here. First off, we clear out our old Heimdall deck archetype, and then we got to rename this guy. Heimdall's got a dream. So, my initial deck guide for Heimdall was encouraging people to play him even if they don't have a full suite of movement cards, just because his flexibility that he offers on the final turn allows you to play a lot of mind games with your opponent. He has a very high skill ceiling expression card. I'm not saying that I am great at playing him, but I just really love the flexibility that he gives and the possibility for outplays even if you're behind on the final turn. You can come back into the game. So. We have picked up some brand new cards that will allow us to tailor our entire deck toward being able to um, get bonuses from being thrown around and we'll be able to overwhelm our opponents both with our flexibility and hopefully with our scaling. So Vulture is a huge piece of this. We're going to add him to deck. So we have Heimdall, our signature finisher. We have Vulture. We need to find our other engine card, which is going to be Multiple Man. Multiple Man, when he moves, you add a copy to the old location. The key here is copy. Copy means that it will keep any of the buffs that we put onto multiple man so if we're just copying the three strength it's fine but it's not a game winner if we can get buffs onto him and then copy him then it makes it's a real difference maker and vulture when this card moves you gain plus five power i pulled him up there but i didn't say exactly what he did now we want to bring in our other synergies with movement which actually we can filter in so let's filter on move finish all right here we go cold cyclops Let's move, x <laughs> It read the move. Okay, fantastic. Enchantress? Remove. Okay. Okay, so the text filter's a little garbage here. Uh, new verse, please. Please work on this. But we know what we need. We need Iron Fist. He's going to be our low curve. He will, on the next card play, punch them one location to the left. An excellent starter for, say, Vulture. So probably don't want to play him on curve. Um, but... He just gives us another option for moving people around. Cloak, similarly, adds a deck. Cloak is beautiful because at a 2-4, he has a good stat line and then allows us to move to a location, as many cards as we want. Doctor Strange, more limited, only moving your highest power card to this location. That can get very finicky. I wish it was a select card for a 3-drop. It feels like Doctor Strange needs a little more, maybe a better stat line, but I'm not going to complain too much. We can make it work. We can make it work. And now Craven. So, I don't know if Craven really has a benefit. Every time you move a card here, you get plus one power. We're going to need to move a lot of cards to his location to be worth it, but he's another two drop to help us round out our energy curve. Nightcrawler is an interesting consideration because he allows you, he gives you that free move. He would empower Craven potentially, um, but he kind of works independent of other movement synergies, and we only have five card slots left. Let's remove the filter, remove the move filter, and then see how else we want to round out this deck. Right out the gate, we know we need Forge and we need Hulkbuster. Hulkbuster is three drop, come to me. There we are. So Forge is going to allow us to put a buff on the next card we play. Hopefully that card is multiple man because then multiple man is a five strength that's getting copied as he moves. And Hulkbuster will pair his strength with a card, also hopefully multiple man. Multiple man being a seven strength moving around feels even better. With three slots left, uh, things are starting to get very tight. I feel like Enchantress is a must take with how prevalent um, Devil Dinosaur and Iron Man are. She's just a huge finisher. So we'll add her to the, to the deck. Is there any five cost we actually care about playing? I I don't think there is. There's good five cost, don't get me wrong, but I don't know if there's anything that really juices up this deck. With two slots left, I think we actually get more benefit playing Moon Girl, Devil Dinosaur ourselves as just kind of a block that's so powerful it hurts never not to take yourself. So there we are. We have the counter to Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur and we run it ourselves. But Moon Girl could also duplicate Iron Fist, duplicate Multiple Man. Um, what else do we care about having multiples of? Honestly, Vulture, if we can Moon Girl the Vulture, 
That could be very good. Having two vultures set up for a final Heimdall swing that gives them a lot of power. Vulture being a 3-8 at a single move is still above the curve of the average three drop. Heimdall's got a dream, all its glory. Let's hop onto the ladder. Okay, what am I expecting? Honestly, I'm expecting a lot of losses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to skim over the losses, but if I'm just getting beaten down all the time, I might show a few if I feel like they're good games. Um, and if I go on a huge loss streak, I'll let you guys know. And we'll pull some highlights here. Let me know in the comments if you enjoy the real-time deck building or if you just want to see highlight matches. We see Forge, Multiple Man, Vulture. Excellent early draws. Pass. Hellfire Club... That should be fine. It's not going to cramp our style too much. We don't have really pivotal one drops. Wakandan Embassy giving pa Oh, is this the best setup possible? Is it actually the best setup possible? Okay, so you play Forge first, of course. And especially drawing the cloak because we're going to be able... So multiply an already a five. We play him next turn is going to make him a seven. It's so good. Space Throne. Only one card can be played here. Interesting. And there's the Hulkbuster. It's so juicy. Space Throne is going to be tough. Honestly, it could be Heimdall goes there at the very end. Let's end this turn. So multiple man uh, hitting the board at a 7 strength. I can Hulkbuster up to 11. And then Cloak to be able to move... We're just missing some cards to be able to really start bouncing him around the board. But he is juiced up. There's the Nova. Okay, so we're fighting the meta deck. Alright, can our good fortune of Wakandan Embassy and honestly favorable card draw claw our way over the, the peak of the meta deck? I'm not sure. We're on round 4. We're Hulkbustering to up to an 11. Not gonna snap yet. When the enemy shows Nova, you know you're in for a rough game. And Space Throne is still going to be a little sticky for us. Just a little sticky. Here come the play. This is going to be a... I'm going to call Wolverine Carnage. Bucky Barnes Carnage. Well, that's worse, honestly. <laughs> oh, Bucky Barnes is disgusting. Feeding Carnage and then turning into Winter Soldier. Look at this, 16 strength. Crazy. But here is where we can start really messing with our opponents. So, it's a uh, Vulture. Vulture to Space Throne. Yeah, because I'm going to move him away. And then play Heimdall there in the end. And then it's a Cloak. Cloak to... Here. Yes. Maybe. And... Okay, things are coming together. I, my, the, the gears in my brain are turning. I've not played this deck very much. You Doctor Strange? What kind of deck are you playing? You're pulling Carnage across. Did you draw... Cable drew my Doctor Strange? Okay. Otherwise, I don't see any reason that he would want to play this. We snap here? This is easy money for us. Oh, the cloak, the cloak keeps... Ah, I kept multiple man from being able to move around. But I'm allowing Vulture to move more, but that's still cutting me off from a lot of... Ben okay, maybe the cloak was an enormous misplay. Maybe the cloak was a terrible misplay. Let's see what happens. <laughs> End the turn. End the turn and see what happens. I'm not puzzling out all the arithmetic, but I think we're still in good shape. It depends on if we win Space Throne, though. Heimdall's big, but what's our opponent going to play? What's your finisher? Is it America Chavez? His finisher could be America Chavez, which puts us in a rough spot. Yeah. Ah, oh, it hurts. So we win Hellfire Club looking away. And then it's only having the single 11 strength in Wakandan Embassy that bites us. I, in hindsight, playing Heimdall to Wakandan Embassy, it would have won the game. Could I have anticipated this kind of play? 
I really should have rather than trying to contest Space Throne. Just give that one up. Interesting. Ooh, Iron Fist ready to level up. I don't mind if I do. I'm sorry for the uh, the camera being all wonky, but we claim this. On our track, a new mystery card. Ah, Scorpion. Afflict cards in your opponent's hand with minus one power. This feels bad. <laughs> feels like a bad card. I've already looked at some of the deck lists of all cards available. I, I don't think I'm ever going to play Scorpion. Then again, the idea right is that you hold Scorpion for right after your opponent plays a Moon Girl. And then you're able to put hopefully minus six across all of their cards. So then it's what? It's a three drop for nine strength. If they actually try and play all of those cards, that's pretty good. Maybe there is a world where he plays. I just wish that maybe he hit their deck too. I don't know. That's asking for too much out of a three drop. Anyway, I've talked too much about a card that I'm not playing. Our next match. Hopefully we have learned from our first one. And we've got some excellent openers. Mojo. If both players have four cards at this location, he gains plus six. I love it. And I want some more of it. I think I Iron Fist... Well, Iron Fist multiple man early, even though we don't have the buffs in place. It'll just put some early pressure out there. And then having a couple copies of multiple man for that turn six Heimdall that will then all copy each other can provide um, significant benefit. You have the two ways of scaling multiple man. Just getting tons of copies out there and then getting... Yeah, we want to kick multiple man. Oh, the Strange Academy is going to move us again. This is amazing. Okay, so we can really play through Strange Academy here. Get some value. You can also get a lot of power onto multiple man. And then when he copies, he's worth a lot. So you have the two different scaling pet. Ah, oh, cloning vats. Why do you reveal now? I would have loved you earlier. But it's an easy vulture. That will clone a vulture, which we want to then play to Strange Academy. I'm feeling good. At, oh, you have played a vulture. Why would you not play the cloning bats, my friend? I feel like we are trying to pilot the same deck, but you're just not quite understanding what you should be doing. But maybe you see something that I don't. I must assume that I am the fool. Uh, play vulture here. I think it's play vulture here, in spite of having some other excellent cards. What's the final? You cloak. Ah. The cloak is offering us some interesting options. And so is this Hulkbuster. Because I could vulture to cloning vats. And then say... Oh. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Forge the Hulkbuster, which will then make multiple man absolutely enormous. He will have to hop to a new location, which will be the hub. And we spread a lot of influence everywhere. Let's end this. It means that Vulture is not going to be able to capitalize on the free move out of Strange Academy. Man, the mind games with this deck are crazy. I feel like I'm barely able to puzzle out all of the options. There's no chance. Ah, you have cloned cloak. Unfortunately for you, I am piloting a movement deck as well. So, hang on. You played cloak and then did not move a vulture? Okay. Okay. Sure. Putting cloak on the far left is not great for us because we want to Heimdall. All right, have the option to hit the hub, which I think that we can take. Hang on, I can, <laughs> I could vulture. Are you going to play Heimdall as well? I can vulture you all the way across and then Heimdall to the center. And I feel like that's just an overwhelming amount of force. Absolutely overwhelming. If you Heimdall to cloning vats, 
Do you beat me? You don't beat me. I've got more. We snap. We've already snapped. <laughs> I thought my opponent snapped. All right, here it is. Yeah, you can see. I cloned the vulture. That was too much for him. And then they cloaked and that played into me. Whew. When the movement decks hit each other, that is wild. Hulkbuster levels up. Don't mind if I do. It feels good playing a new deck where things are hitting upgrades that are actually affordable. Even though it's only one tick. Uh, progression slows way down at the end. Play me again. Hello, Bleeding Wolf. So, I've got Doctor Strange in the deck. I just saw Multiverse of Madness. Oh, man. Spoilers for Multiverse of Madness. <laughs> Timestamps if you want to skip away from the game. It's so bad. Absolutely so bad. Sam Rainey does the Ryan Johnson of Marvel and just spits in the face of what the story arc of all of those characters was. And it's appalling. WandaVision... One of my favorite shows Marvel is actually, yes, my fa absolute favorite show that Marvel has been able to concoct. And Wanda had such a beautiful story arc. She was grieving. She It felt like at the end of WandaVision, she was having a redemptive arc. She left Westview. She didn't want to hurt innocent people because of her grief. And Vision, White Vision, was out there with the memories of his beloved. <laughs> and then Wanda dies? Are you kidding me? They just kill her off? I can script Doctor, the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness with a simple change. You need to add Vision. Why Vision is not in it is almost unforgivable. And this is fantastic. We multiple man here in a heartbeat because we also have Hulkbuster and then Cloak. It's a little off curve, but it's very fun. <laughs> um, yes, end turn. Okay, so script doctoring, multiverse of madness. You have to have vision in there. When Wong and Wanda are going up to the tower with the stone darkhold, they need to feel like they saw this white ghost as a little bit of foreshadowing. And you realize at some point later on that white vision is out there watching Wanda. Then Wong ends up getting thrown off the cliff, right? He hits the ground. When you have the scene of him waking up, he needs to be like, that's incredible that I survived this fall. And then you see White Vision materialize, and he thinks he's seeing a ghost again, which fits into like the, the jump scares and the um, creepy goings-ons. Ah, oh, there's so many options. There's so many good options. What do we play here? We play... You're going to snap? You think you're going to snap. Interesting. I cloak vulture. I believe it's cloak vulture. Because then I can move, move with a Heimdall final play. The problem is that we only get nine strength in here at the end of it all. Okay, we'll take it. Wong and Vision then exchange a few lines about how Vision says, I don't know if she's the same woman that I had loved before. And I think Professor X just beats us. Lock down this location. It cannot be added, removed, or destroyed. Yeah, that's pretty much the end of us. Oh, uh, why does Professor X have to exist? And why are you playing Professor X? Nobody plays Professor X. Nobody loves you. If I play, so I'm losing, I'm winning. It's locked down. I'm winning by a lot, frankly. But if I play Heimdall here, I lose Titan but win Savage Land. If I play Heimdall here, I add five, which is not enough. This is so weird. I think it's like this. And I'll play it just to see what you've got. But the Professor X probably beats us. Wong and Vision exchange some lines. Vision says, I don't think she's the woman that I used to love. Wong says, if you really loved her, that shouldn't matter. Vision says, maybe I do have to start accounting for magic among you humans. 
It's a beautiful scene, but he still flies away and he's trying to process things. And then Wanda is destroying the stone dark holds. You get the dramatic music. You get more close up shots of her slowly breaking it down and it's collapsing. You then cut and you see Vision watching, zoom into his eye, flashback to the first time that he met Wanda as he's flying through Sokovia to pull her out of the falling city. And just on instinct, he zips in there and flies her away. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. There's tears in the audience's eyes. They're applauding because you know how many fans of WandaVision were probably at the movie theaters utterly disgusted with the end of her character? I can tell you a lot. And it's just a wonderful moment. Vision and Wanda then get their little moment together in the clouds. Wanda is in tears. She says, Vision, why are we in the one universe where we're alone without my kids? Vision says, this might be the universe without your kids, but will you be the mother to my kids? And then you realize that he has built two little android children and they still get to be a happy family in a completely alternate take to what she's seen in every other universe. And she realizes that she can still be happy. Upgrade cloak again. I know, hold your applause. Your applause is deafening through the comments. Disney, if you're watching, my uh, open application. You can find my email in the channel. Okay, now that that disjointed script doctor work for WandaVision is done, let's play another game. For anybody who skipped out because of the spoilers, I gotta have an ending for them too, so we're going a little longer than I thought we would. Ah, uh, beautiful. I am always happy to see the wonky names because then I know it's not a bot. We get a good game here. Multiple man vulture, Doctor Strange. So we've got all of our engine cards. Sanctum Sanctorum actually is a beautiful play for us because as long as we draw Heimdall or Iron Fist, frankly, we'll be able to get in there. Um, and our opponent should not. What's really interesting to me right now is that I have not hit. <laughs> I haven't hit people playing the self-destruction Nova Carnage garbage that I was fully expecting. It, did everybody on ladder collectively get sick and tired of it and want to experiment? I feel like we've played more movement decks on our opponent's side than, um, than I've ever seen before. I thought that this was going to be something at least semi-original. Obviously, I've seen the deck archetype before, but... Okay, so here's the Hulkbuster. Empower this multiple man. And then, is it a cloak angle? That'll be turn four. I could Doctor Strange. It depends a little on what we draw. You know what would be wild? Is if we draw Iron Fist here. Any Iron Fist? No, okay. That's fine, that's fine. We don't have anything that we want Enchantress to hit. So we have to decide, is it Doctor Strange or is it Cloak? I think it is Doctor Strange. Because then next turn can be both Vulture and Cloak. No, it can't because of Dream, dream Dimension. Ah, dream Dimension always throws such a wrench in my plans. My perfectly laid plans. But I will still play Doctor Strange. Okay. A Nightcrawler. Beautiful flexibility. No, Cosmo. Are you kidding? They have the counter to Doctor Strange? Oh, why are they like this? Okay, hang on, hang on. This is on reveal effect. This is on reveal effect. All right. You have made me do this. And I, for science, we have to see how this works. On reveal, move next card. You play one location to the left after it. Re no, after it reveals. A after it. Re wait, wait, wait. After it, it specifically said after it reveals. So I get the on reveal effect. And then it moves. How am I supposed to use this? <laughs> Oh, uh, it's so bad. Honestly, I kind of want to play Vulture here so that then I can cloak over here and then hope to draw Heimdall. Oh, what a mess. What a mess. And you've got Nova Carnage. 
I said I wanted to play some meta decks. I don't know. I don't know if I'm so excited anymore. Ah, you had Angel too, of course you did. Heimdall? No Heimdall. That's a retreat. Retreat now. Okay, so... The well, uh, well played to the opponent, I suppose. You put you put Cosmo into your deck, and the move you prevented the movement deck from being able to beat you at Sanctum Sanctorum. Did we do anything, quote quote, wrong? Did we take a bad line of play? I'm not sure. I hate ending on that kind of game. We just fizzled, absolutely fizzled. Give me in another one. Shadowland opens up. We have Iron Fist, Vulture, and then Devil Dino Moon Girl. Very fun. We're going to hold Iron Fist to try and jumpstart the Vulture in case we don't draw into anything else. If we can draw into... Ah, draw two cards. Well, we didn't know Olympia was going to flip. Anyway, let's go multiple man here. Multiple man to... Yeah, it's someplace on the left. Moving, moving left seems to be the way. I feel like they need to add some cards that will move you to the right, but maybe that'll be... Part of the deck and part of being able to beat the deck is understanding that it, it only moves one direction. We Hulkbuster, no brainer. And then it's gonna be an Iron Fist Vulture combo to put Vulture as an eight strength into Olympia. And we've got Doctor Strange as, wow, we have so many great options. Okay, so it's Iron Fist first and then the Vulture. Okay, Kim. Kick him hard. That pulls him out. Amps him up. Jubilee comes in. Ah, the Jubilee decks are very interesting. Can, they can reliably hit America Chavez. I've been wondering if I want to build myself one of those. It looks incredibly fun. So here is going to be Doctor Strange pulling Vulture back. And then Cloak stretching multiple man over. I, that feels like a very strong combo. We bring Vulture back. He's going to turn into a, a 13. We've really been able... We gave him plus 10. I love it. Cloak for next round. They wave. Now all cards are going to be four on this next round. Uh, so I'm not able to play really any combos. Interesting. If I play, no, because Craven would get played after the cards move. So he's, he's out. He is out. I could play Devil Dinosaur. This is the, the final turn. I think it's... Devil Dinosaur here. And then obviously Multiple Man. If I pull Vulture away, I don't know. Are we able to win? We definitely win here, but then we get seven back, and so it's 11. No, we're, we would be behind. So I think I leave it, and I snap. The final turn wave to block me playing multiple cards, very clever to my opponent because I would have loved also Moon Girl and make my Devil Dinosaur even stronger. I still feel good about how this came together. He rushes Olympia, but keeps just enough on the Onslaught Citadel. As we won every location. Oh, he thought we were going to bring Vulture over and Shang-Chi was going to kill him, but no. <laughs> ah. Level me up here right at the end. I'm just jamming, guys. This deck is so fun. Oh, we got even more rewards to gleam. So what did we learn about the deck? We learned that this deck is amazing. We learned that it can kind of stand up on ladder. If we're hitting a lot of Nova Carnage, that, that game in particular felt very bad. <laughs> but we had some other great games, and especially the mind games when both decks are running the movement archetype. Oh man, those are fun. The engine pieces of Multiple Man and Vulture actually can carry, as long as you're able to buff them. 
I've seen another clever play where you play um you play the Wakandan guard who's able to buff cards in hand and that's another way you can jumpstart the multiple man but this guy this guy he gets a buff and then a couple a couple stretches goes insane and Vulture as we've seen also can get amped up way above what other three drops are able to do with this suite of cards so to be able to improve the deck I think that you look to replace the Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur with more movement synergy cards. Cards that set up movement, you could also probably drop Craven just for a high value 2 drop. Um, what would be fun there would actually be Angela, right? Because Angela, where are you my girl, can benefit from you continually playing cards to her location. And because you have so many movement abilities, you could be pulling people away and then playing new cards in. The thing is that you do have to be worried you need your engine cards to be the highest value for Doctor Strange to work. And that's pretty important. Is that a 3-2? He's absolutely a brick otherwise. Yeah. So many interesting combos. Really the highbrow deck. I think this is the highest skill expression deck that I've seen. Not saying that I am the highest skill player, but if you guys are interested in a deck that gives you the tools to outsmart your opponents more than brute force your opponents with your card combos it's it's this one i hope you guys enjoy let me know in the comments how you guys would improve the deck and if you've been enjoying the marvel snap content Till next time thank you guys for watching and have a good one